And another thing we can bring up is the material settings that go along with uh, this object. So if we click off of here, you're seeing we're using the matte cap gray. Earlier, we went into different ways you can go into like the skin shader and then go into your material settings under your modifiers and changing the diffuse curves. But the stylized non-photorealistic rendering effect that we're getting is all done through the BPR filters. However, you'll notice that if I go from a matte cap gray to say like a chrome bright and then do another render, I'm getting a completely different effect. And this one has a lot of color into it. If you want to go ahead and say, you know what, I want everything to be black and white or desaturated. One thing you do, and we kind of went over this a little bit earlier, is let's go ahead and I'm just going to take one of these blank ones down here. Then we're going to copy it, and then we're going to go to F1, and then we're going to go to Insert. So that's going to move everything down. So this F1 here, we can change it. Oh, it's already set. So uh, if it's not, go into Filter and choose Saturation, and then take the saturation and uh, go ahead and make it negative 100. So now no matter what material you're using, it'll go ahead and desaturate it for you. So first, let's go back to Matcap Gray, and we'll do a BPR render. I'm going to go up here to Texture grab doc and that's going to grab my document as an image. If we hover over this we're going to see that's the result we get with matcap gray. I'm going to switch it back to uh, that chrome bright blue and then we're going to go ahead and re-render it again and again we desaturated first with here but you're going to see if I go to texture grab doc and we go between these two you're going to see there's quite a bit of difference and let's do one more. Let's do uh, one of these. You know, let's go back to our skin shader 4 and then hit BPR and again we'll do texture Grab doc. So now we have three different versions getting very different looks depending on what material we have selected. If you want to override the user selected materials and give control to the BPR filters to dictate how the end result is going to look regardless of the material that the user has selected, what you can do is let's go ahead and do, again we'll just grab this F12 and we'll do a copy, we'll go back to F1, we're going to go to insert. And right at the very beginning here, we're going to choose this filter and go down there to the very bottom and choose material shading. What we're going to do is essentially build in a matte cap into this F1. So no matter what material they have selected, it's going to change it to a matte cap uh, gray, let's say. Because let's say we built this whole thing around the fact that we chose matte cap gray. And so when we hit render, it gives us this result and we really like it. But if the end user has something like reflect red and they hit BPR render, they may get something quite a bit different. So we want to ensure that no matter what material they have selected, it's going to give them that matte cap gray base result, which would be this result right here. So how we ensure that they do that is we have a material shading filter applied. Uh, it's set to replace. Let's go ahead and bump that material shading up to 100. And underneath this texture here, go ahead and choose matte cap gray. So now even if we switch this over to like MAH shiny and hit render, we're still going to get that matte cap gray result. Or if we choose chrome bright blue, hit render, still get the matte cap gray result because this is our first one. If we turn that off and then hit BPR render, you're going to see this is the result we're getting. If we turn it on, that's going to replace that first render with that matte cap gray. So now if we go in here to texture, grab dock, this first one and this last one should be identical because they're both using uh, matte cap gray as the start, even though I have a different material chosen.